Hi, I'm Catty. And I'm Nabby. And welcome to DNA Genes and Meiosis. Isn't DNA that thing that makes these things, these things, and these things, and these things? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Abby. That's right. <laughs> That's correct. And these things, and these things, and these things. So what is DNA, I hear you ask? Let's go and find out with Abby. Thanks for that, Catty. You're welcome, Abby. Thanks. You're welcome, Abby. DNA is made up of three components. A sugar, called deoxyribose, a phosphate group, and an organic base. The organic bases can either be cytosine, guanine, timine or adenine. All of these are combined as a result of the condensation reactions to give a single nucleotide, like this. Two mononucleotides can be combined to make a dinucleotide, which you're just going to have to imagine because we only make one of these. The condensation occurs between the phosphate group of one mononucleotide and the deoxyribose sugar of another, like that. But how does this relate to the whole DNA structure? Let's go over to Catty to find out more. Thanks, Abby. You're well... Oh, I'm only joking. DNA is made up of two long strands of nucleotides, or polynucleotides. They are joined together by two hydrogen bonds. Adenine and thymine share two bonds, whereas guanine and cytosine share three bonds. This bonding is said to be complementary like Bella and Edward, and Hagrid and Madame Maxine, like Dumbledore and Grindelwald. The quantities of the complementary pairs always remain the same, but it is the ratio of adenine and thymine to guanine and cytosine that change. But what about DNA's function? DNA has the most important function ever. It passes genetic information from cell to cell and generation to generation. Its infinite variety of sequences provides genetic diversity within living organisms. It's stable and passes on without change. Because the two separate strands are only joined together by hydrogen bonds, it allows them to separate during DNA replication and protein synthesis rather easily. Because it is a large molecule, it can carry a large amount of genetic information. Its base pairs are within the helical cylinder of the deoxyribose phosphate backbone, which means that the genetic information is somewhat protected from being corrupted by outside chemical and physical forces. As you may have seen in our previous biology instalment, prokaryotic cells are not associated with protein molecules and so have no chromosomes. Eukaryotic cells do, on the other hand. Chromosomes are only visible when the cell is dividing and are two chromatids joined together by a centromere. The DNA in the chromosomes are tightly wound around proteins called histones, and these mean that as much DNA as possible can fit inside a chromosome. Chromosomes occur in pairs, and these are called homologous pairs. In humans, this pair will be made up from the sperm and the egg joining together to make up a total diploid number of 46. Now let's really grab DNA by the balls, which coincidentally is where meiosis happens. In sexy time reproduction, two gametes fuse together to give rise to new offspring. Bum face! In the first division, or meiosis 1, which happens here, homologous chromosomes pair up and their chromatids wrap around each other, much like slugs do when they're having sex. By the end of this stage, the homologous pairs have separated with one chromosome from each pair going into one of the two daughter cells. In the second meiotic division, or meiosis II, the chromatids move apart. At the end of meiosis II, which is displayed here, four cells have been formed, with each of these cells containing 23 chromatids. Another good thing about meiosis is that it creates loads of variation, which is good if you don't want to end up looking like these. Meiosis brings about this genetic variation in one of the two ways in which I shall say now. Independent segregation of homologous chromosomes and the recombination of homologous chromosomes 
by crossing over. Right, crossing over. Independent segregation occurs during meiosis 1 and is when the homologous pairs of chromosomes arrange themselves in a little line, side by side. As we know, one of each pair will be passed along to each daughter cell, but which one it will be and which pair it will go with to a daughter cell, no one knows. The pairs line up at random, so the combo of chromosomes that go into the cell are also random, much like this sentence. So Blackheart wouldn't have been working super sweet candy apples. They can also differ from different combinations of alleles, such as whether you have black hair or ginger hair. But how does this relate to my genes? Not those genes, you silly fish. These genes. Genes are sections of DNA which are found on chromosomes. Genes contain the instructions for how to make proteins. Proteins are made up of amino acids. Different proteins have different numbers and orders of amino acids. It's the order of the nucleotide basis in a gene that determines the order of amino acids in a particular protein. So depending on the order of cytosine, guanine, thymine and adenine, it determines which order the amino acids will be in a particular protein. However, although DNA contains lots of triplets, not all code for amino acids. No, indeed. Some may code for a start or a stop. Or some DNA sections may not code for anything. Alas! Eowax! These sections of DNA that don't do anything at all are called introns. Introns are removed from DNA during protein synthesis. The remaining extrons are then spliced together in a nice sequence which will code for an amino acid order. An easy way to remember this is that extrons express the DNA code, whereas introns interrupt it. Clever that, isn't it, chaps? That's not all, though! Genes exist in different forms called alleles. The order of bases in each allele is slightly different, so they code for slightly different versions of the same characteristics. For example, there are three different alleles for blood type. Type O, Type A, and Type B. However, mutations can result in non-functioning proteins. I know, shocker. Mutations are changes in the base sequence of an organism's DNA, so mutations can produce new alleles of genes. A gene codes for a particular protein, so if the sequence of bases in a gene changes, a non-functional or different protein can be produced. For example, all enzymes are proteins, if there's a mutation in the gene that calls for an enzyme, then the enzyme may not be able to form up properly, producing an active site that's the wrong shape, and so a non-functional enzyme. That is the end of our video on DNA meiosis and genes. We hope you enjoyed our biology video. We'll make another one soon.